Welcome to the Group Dentistry Now Show, the voice of the DSO industry. Kim Larson and Bill Newman talk to industry leaders about their challenges, successes, and the future of group dentistry. Visit groupdentistrynow.com for more DSO analysis, news, and events. Looking for a job or have a job to fill? Visit joindso.com. We hope you enjoy today's show. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Group Dentistry Now show. I'm Bill Newman, and uh, thanks everybody for listening today. We have a couple special guests here today. So we have Dr. Asnes from Dental365. He is the founder and CEO. So first off, welcome Dr. Asnes to the Group Dentistry Now show. Thanks for being here today. Good morning, Bill, and good morning, Kim, and thank you for inviting me. I'm a huge fan of group dentistry now. Oh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. And Dr. Asnes, actually, welcome Kim, who never is here. Well, (laughs) she's done done three or four podcasts. So Kim is the co-founder and the chief marketing officer of group dentistry now. And we're happy to have her here today to to assist. So um, So, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm going to introduce Dr. Asmus because this is a real honor having him here today. He doesn't usually grant interviews. So this is this is a really special interview. And we really appreciate him being here sharing his knowledge. He's actually a working dentist. So he's not only the founder and CEO of Dental 365, he's actually working as a dentist and has a interesting and different perspective. He graduated from NYU's College of Dentistry and was granted and completed a general practice residency at the Brooklyn Veterans Administration Hospital. He is a lifelong New Yorker. He founded Dental 365 in 2014. Its innovative and state-of-the-art dental offices have grown in size and popularity. It has locations in New York, Connecticut, and now New Jersey. In 2017, we featured Dental 365 on our dental groups to watch list, and they have grown rapidly since then. And we've featured them a few times on our website. So this is exciting to to talk to Dr. Asnes today. Doctor, can you just take us through a brief history of Dental 365? Absolutely. And thank you for the nice introduction. Realize the future of dentistry was changing in the direction of group practice model. There definitely was a noticeable gap in the New York dental marketplace because better practices and providers wanted to join a company led by dentists. I was a dentist in private practice for 30 years, and I cared deeply about the patient experience and clinical outcomes in my offices. And more importantly, I really had great respect for the consumer, my patients. So I decided I wanted to build a different type of dental company, caring about clinical outcomes first and focusing on the patient experience. With a branded retail locations on Main and Main and state-of-the-art modern offices with convenient hours and days. Bill and Kim, dentistry is really hard, and I have real empathy for how hard a profession it is, and I always keep that in mind. So when I started this in 2014, I opened my first de novo office in Park Slope, Brooklyn, and it became extremely busy very quickly. I then started to open a few more locations in Manhattan and Long Island, and I became inundated with calls from similar-minded dentists interested in joining me. My vision really became a a reality at that point. So this happened back in in 2014, and and what were were there any other group practices or any other um, DSOs in in the New York market at the time? There were. I I didn't even know what the the letters DSO meant. And there were very few DSOs. They were not coming into the marketplace. Actually, difficulty with understanding the fixed costs. It's fairly expensive to run and open. And I just saw that there was a need for a company like mine where it was dentist-led and dentist-owned and dentist-run. So besides being in in the New York uh, metro area, making you unique, uh, because there are very few, like you said, D, you know, DSO really wasn't wasn't a thing, or you didn't know what it stood for then. Beyond being in, in that part of the country, why is Dental Three Sixty Five so unique? Like, what do you do to really set yourselves apart? That's a good question. 
because we look at exceptional patient experience from start to finish and we care about clinical outcomes it is largely our growth organically is from dentists who call us. Again, as I said before, we're a unique platform where it's dentist leadership is layered throughout the organization. Dentists want to be supported by dentists and not administrators. So our reputation in the community with our core values really accelerated our growth and business development. A lot has happened in six years. The most prestigious offices wanted to join us, and we now support just about 60 offices, which include GPs, pediatric, orthodontic, oral surgery, and numerous multi-specialty offices. We are growing very rapidly. So, uh, and it, I know towards uh, the end of last year, you actually opened up some locations in in New Jersey as well, right? So you were in New York, Connecticut, and Connecticut. New Jersey. That, that's correct. Is the the amount of dentists who are calling me from New Jersey were just way beyond my expectations. Is that the really best practices are calling me now? And we don't solicit them. They've been calling us. And uh, it's been really cool to see. Dr. Asnes, we had mentioned earlier that you're not the typical CEO or founder of a DSO. And your DSO is not typical. You are really laser focused on the consumer. Can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that and your patient experience? You know, I'm really a strong believer in consumerism. So we pay close attention to every detail from the first interaction when the patient comes in, including the smell of the office. Right. Bill and Kim, you wrote a beautiful article on my relationship with NatScent and how Dental 365 offices utilize our own signature scent when the patient walks in. Really, it's a subtle, pleasant sensory experience. And more so, we worry about the patient experience from the moment they walk in our office to the moment they call and we do have meticulously beautiful appointed offices with state of the art, with streaming music and televisions and the operatories. And most really important to me, because I, I preach this in my private practice, we are very aware of respecting our patient's time. So there's little to no wait whatsoever at time of the scheduled appointment. I'm sure Bill and Kim, you've waited in medical offices and it's very painful. Um, talk a little bit about the, you know, likening the high-end experience that you provide to the Ritz-Carlton, um, where, you know, the, it's, it's a consumer-focused experience versus a patient experience. So it's not just about the patient outcome, but it's about the entire experience from when you walk in and again to, to, to the clinical outcome itself. Absolutely, is we look at patient happiness and patient retention. Our KPIs are much different than most dental companies. We really care that we are doing the right thing for the patient, giving them great clinical outcomes, making sure that everything is meticulous and fastidious from when they walk in, as I said before. And from the way we feel that we want the patients to know that we respect their time. Let me go back to question a little bit around the practice locations. Um, mm -hmm. So you're, you're, in, you're in New York metro area. Uh, unfortunately, when COVID hit, um, New York City in particular was, was um, really impacted. And so you had uh, an exodus of, of a lot of people left the city. For, for various reasons. So um, talk, little, talk a little bit about your strategy. Talk about the impact that it had on your practices in the city and, and what you're able to do. So we are pretty good crisis leadership. So we've been able to understand about problem solvings and we are very quickly able to implement strategies to help navigate the pandemic. So early on in February, 2020, I realized that COVID-19 was not going to fade away and I needed to act quickly. So first I needed to protect the well-being of our doctors, staff, and patients. We knew right away our offices had to be safe. If our patients felt safe in our offices, then they would continue to come in. So we proactively ordered mobile HEPA filter devices for all the sites. 
and we act, enacted the strictest guidelines and protocols in our offices. We also offered access to COVID testing to our employees inside the offices to make it easier for everyone. Uh, so when New York State closed down dentistry, with the exception of essential procedures, we stayed open throughout. We are open because hospital emergency rooms and urgent cares and even private dental offices that were competing with us, they were closed. So they were referring to us for emergency dental care. We really were doing our part to flatten the curve and the gratitude we received from the patients were really heartfelt and genuine. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is great to, to hear. And um, it's, uh, it's a testament to the model that, that you have. Um, you, you also touched on this a little bit earlier where you, you mentioned a couple of times that you have dentists actually coming to you looking to partner with, with Dental 365, uh, partner their practices with Dental 365. That's, that's pretty unique in, in the DSO and the group practice space. So let's talk a little bit about the, the reason behind that. And um, uh, just, just kind of curious because I'm sure there are a lot of groups out there that would love to have that problem. As I said before, and this is very important, is that dentists want to be supported by dentists and not administrators. We give them all the tools, including an amazing Dental 365 University, because we founded an educational platform to make it available to our doctors so they could be more efficient and get better clinical outcomes, because we stimulate our docs with real dental education. And we provide them in an environment which they can excel and grow professionally. We offer study clubs and mentoring and all different types of protocols. And we, we really understand the stresses of being a dentist. We also, which I think is very impactful, we protect their legacies, is that we want to make sure that we all help each other there are certain circumstances when there's peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, when dentists are having some issues. And we really are a big team of now 140 dentists and growing. It's incredible. Dr. Asnes, you're the, the driving force behind the success of Dental 365, clearly. Your consumer-driven experience, your patient care. What's next for Dental 365? So our plan is to continue to build on our momentum. We are the leaders in the metropolitan area, and we support, as you said, three states' offices. Our most, most recent entry into New Jersey has really exceeded our expectations. There continues to be a robust number of dentists to reach out and to want to join our network. In fact, we're about to support an additional 10 GPs and specialty offices. Bill and Kim, we're unicorns. We support all different types of dental practices, just not GPs. And I really think it's very important to note that if you give ex exceptional patient experience in a convenient retail setting, that's universally desired. And this has proven to be a very successful business model for us in the New York metropolitan area. I'm confident we can replicate it in different regions in different states. Absolutely. With well, the 10 that you're bringing on, are they located in New York, New Jersey? Where, where are they located? So we have some in uh, three more in New Jersey, in Westchester, and going further up New York State. As you know, the New York Metro Dental Healthcare is an awfully big healthcare region. So New York, what's the practice count there and how many docs do you support in, in New York State? So right now we support three offices with three more offices in New Jersey. Is We have one office in Connecticut, which we are going to be expanding. And then the rest is in New York State, including 35 in Long Island. And we have seven in New York City. Okay. So we are going to be at 60 in a few weeks. And then we have 10 more additional, probably within the next three months. And we are only six years old. It's incredible, the growth. Yeah, you, you're, Thank you. I think, I think you mentioned, uh, whether it was uh, in the Nets article, it was probably even in the 
back in 2017, the growth, it seems like you're doubling just about every year, which I guess becomes more and more challenging. <laughs> which, which we do, but end is that we really just feel good. We have a great infrastructure with a great team of dental professionals. We just are a group of dentists and dental assistants and dental managers that are really understanding how to support a dental office. We look at things differently, as I said before. So I've got a couple questions. I've got one um, wrapped around the the growth that you've had. So if you were Mm -hmm. going to give any advice to the the listeners and the readers of Group Dentistry now, what would you say if if for a startup DSO that's doctor owned and led, which most of them are, that's the way they start off. How do you handle this this type of growth? What are you doing to kind of keep that culture that you've created intact, which which seems like it is is you know it's, it's wonderful because you've got again dentists you know almost lined up to to come uh, partner with you, which is a, again a great problem to have. But uh, let's talk a little bit about as you scale up. You know what are you doing to ensure that yeah. you, know, you kind of keep things um, like they were when you started in right. 2014? Well, that, that's really a great question. Is well, first is I think the best advice for potential dentists who want to start scaling is as I said many times, is worry about the patient experience and the clinical outcomes. And also make sure that you build an infrastructure so you don't fall under the weight of your growth. One of the best things I did when I started this was I started with a true cloud-based EMR that provides real clinical visibility, centralized revenue cycle, and the ability to build dashboards and to specifically ask your qu- to answer your question is that I have allowed very, very talented young dentists to sit at the table with me, understand our strategies, and we've built out a very robust CDO, Chief Dental Officer Program, where they are now helping, as I scale, make decisions based on what our original vision of this is. And I really couldn't be prouder of them. So yes, we have many now young dentists who are helping run the company. What are your thoughts on dentists who want to start their own DSO because they want to get out of the chair? And that's the single reason that they want to start a DSO. I think it's a mistake. I think that even though now I'm going to be soon supporting 70 or 80 offices, is that I think my dentists really appreciate that I'm a wet finger dentist. I understand their stresses. I get to understand because we are an evidence-based company and understand using supplies that we use, making sure that our laboratories are giving us uh, a very good product. And I think my dentists and all my CDOs are practicing dentists. So that's a very good question, Kim. I think it's very important. I think that dentists who want to do this to not be dentists, I don't think they'll really understand what's going on in their business. That's great insight. Yeah, that uh, makes makes a lot of sense. And uh, so let's, so, so now you've got a much bigger platform than you once did and you're still practicing dentistry. You obviously have help, but I mean, when I say help, you have people helping you with the Mm non-clinical. Let's talk about the use of technology as you've scaled up. I mean, are you seeing any new technology out there? What have you incorporated? uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So our platform is really designed to support our doctors to achieve best clinical outcomes. So we do use 3D comb beams. I think this is very important. Intraoral cameras in every operatory, digital scanners to take the most accurate dental impressions. Uh, as I talked about before, we're cloud-based, and I think that is a must when you're starting this. And most recently, we are implementing AI, which is really exciting to me. I think that is going to really change the way we practice dentistry. Interesting. So uh, can you talk a little bit about the AI? I know you said you just recently imp- uh, implemented it, but that's um, that's one of the new new uh, things out there. So what, what, what does that look like for yeah, you? What capacity? So we are just we starting a corporate in our first office and it really assists our dental professionals by identifying issues early on. 
and helps our doctors by providing them with another set of eyes. And I think it's just beginning. And I'm very excited for to have these companies like Pearl really incorporate all the things that they do into just not my company, but into dentistry. Well, I'll throw this question out there. It's, it's almost the mm-hmm. reverse of the question we had regarding your advice for startup DSOs. Do you see a future for solo practitioners? And what I mean by that is people that want to own their a single office, they want to stay small. And if you do, um, what advice would you have for somebody that do- doesn't necessarily want to start a DSO, but just wants to remain, uh, hang a shingle and, and, and kind of do their own thing? Well, you know, I'm, I'm the right person to ask because I still own a private practice. Right. And uh, that is not part of Dental 365. And I think that's very, very important to stay up and not making sure that you have the most modern equipment and the most modern technology because sometimes dentists become stagnant. And I've always taken so many uh, continuing education. I'm a very, very big fan of Dr. Gordon Christensen for 38 years. And I do think it's very important to not get stagnant. And I think that if a dentist does that, they could be very successful in making sure they care about the patient experience because consumerism is here to stay. So I'm going to ask you to take out your crystal ball. And um, this is the last question for you. So again, thanks for your time, Dr. Krasnus. Future of dentistry and then the future, well, how about the future of dentistry? Uh, do you still see, do you see continued consolidation? And then what's the future for Dental 365? You gave us a little bit of a insight as to some of the uh, additional practices, mm-hmm. but maybe look out a couple of years for both the industry and, and Dental 365. I'm really excited for the future of both Dental 365 and the positive direction our industry is headed. I'm really proud to be part of the DSO movement. I think, again, caring about clinical outcomes and providing exceptional consumer experience is universally desired in all healthcare because there really is a great appetite for dentists to want to join DSOs that share these core principles. So I envision the future of this company on being the forefront of changing the way people view going to the dentist and joining DSOs is that I think that there is going to be a great consolidation. And I think that that DSOs now are becoming more sophisticated, more dentist friendly, and more focused on the patient experience. And I really look at ourselves as disruptors to the traditional a private dental office model by creating a platform that's beneficial to the dentist and the patients. Give me a couple of years out for Dental 365. What's uh, so, What does it look like? It, it's that, by the way, I'm really excited about it. It's I think that in five years, we will be in the Northeast Corridor and we plan on adding probably be about 250 to 300 offices. We really are very, very excited. I think we hit onto something, almost kind of like breaking the code, where dentists want to join dentist-led companies. All right. Well, that's that's good. I mean, well, I'm I'm excited. Maybe you'll actually uh, end up down here in, in Pennsylvania, and we'll see some uh, see some of your uh, Dental 365 locations down here. Bill and Kim, I want to thank you. And again, I am such a fan. It has really helped me over the last few years by reading group dentistry now. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you for saying that. We really appreciate that. We work hard at, at trying to connect the industry and bring the information to the industry that's that's needed to help it grow. So it's been an honor having you here. I know that this is really an exclusive interview. And for that, we are humbly grateful and value your insight and wisdom. And we're going to have to ask you to come back in a couple of years and we'll see if your crystal ball was correct. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. And thanks everybody uh, for listening to Dr. Asnes from Dental 365, the CEO and founder. And thank you, Kim Larson, for um, appearing on the Group Dentistry Now podcast. We're going to make sure you come back. And uh, for everybody listening, we appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Bill Newman. 
The Group Dentistry Now show has listeners across North and South America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. If you like our show, subscribe today and please tell your colleagues about us.